following on from Chris's newsletter 316, where the puzzle was quite short. There was in it, as well, an article on, or a piece on, equable shapes. And down at the bottom, a bit on equable Pythagorean triples. And I just thought, well, that could have been offered as well as a little problem. Can you find any equable Pythagorean triples? That is a Pythagorean triple where the sum of the sides is equal to, numerically, the area of that triangle. Well, the first part would be, how do you find a suitable variety of Pythagorean triples to investigate? Well, calling the sides A, B and C, everyone knows Pythagoras is a connection between the three sides. But for it to be a Pythagorean triple, those three numbers have to be natural numbers. Those three numbers, A, B and C, would have to be positive integers. I'll just call them integers now. But that's no use to investigate Pythagorean triples because you've got three unknowns here and it would just be a matter of trial and error to try and find some of them. There aren't three unknowns though in a right angle triangle. In an ordinary triangle, yes, there's a degree of freedom for each of the sides. They could have various numbers independently of each other within the bounds of the triangle inequality. One side can't be bigger than the sum of the other two. But with a right angle triangle, you only need two sides and then the third side is completely determined by them. You don't need three unknowns. You should be able to specify a right angle triangle with only two parameters. So squaring just two things, squaring just two things. If you take two things and square them, what do you get? U squared, square the first, press the product, square the last. And similarly, what if you do the subtraction as well? Square the first, minus twice the product, square the last. I want something else for the third bit. If you subtract them, if you do u plus v squared minus the u minus v squared, you would get that takeaway that disappears. That takeaway that jumps up to 4uv, that disappears. Now there's a connection between three things where there's only two parameters now. So if those were the squarings of sides, this is a wee bit nasty just now, if those were the squarings of sides, that'd be like the difference between the hypotenuse and a shorter side, leaving the square of the remaining side. So that would be the side that would have been u plus v, and then picking either of them, this one down here, that would be the side that would be u minus v, but unfortunately this would be the side which would have to be the square root of that, that would be, have to be the side that was two times the square root of uv. Ah, that's kind of spoilt it a bit. But not unless you let u be a square and v be a square. Just going back to a's and b's now. Then I can say, well, what have I got for the sides here? Well, instead of 2 root uv, that would then become 2ab. Instead of that being u plus v, that would be a squared plus b squared. Instead of that being u minus v, that would be a squared minus b squared. Now there's a way of generating any Pythagorean triple you like, simply by putting in numbers a and b. One other thing here, of course, there's a subtraction. If you let u be any square number and v be the square of any number, then of course a would have to be whoops, greater than b. Well, let's start growing these triangles then. What's the smallest pair I can use if A is greater than B? That would be 2, 1. So multiply them and double it. 4. Square it and subtract it. 4 take away 1. 3. Square it and add it. 4 plus 1, 5. And there you are, there's that first one. The 3, 4, 5 triangle. Now, of course, this could go on and on forever. There are any sort of patterns here. If you stick with 1 for B, that could then go up to 3. What's the next one going to be? Is that going to be your 5, 12, 13? Well, you multiply it and see. Product doubled, 6. 9, take away 1, 8. 9 plus 1, 10. Well, it just turns out to be the same one again. It's a multiple of the first one. Now that's going to happen later on as well, the multiples. But that can't get any simpler, so you could call that 
a root Pythagorean triple, since that's a multiple of it. What's the next one going to be? 4, 1. Mm, 4, 1. Is that my 5, 12, 13? Because you get that excited about that one. Because you know that one. 4, 1. Same before. Multiply them. And double it. 8. Square and subtract. 16 take away 1, 15. 16 add 1, 17. No, it turned out to be the 8, 15, 17. What about 5, 1? You can just go on all day doing this. Multiply it out, it'll be 10, 24, 26. Well, there's my 5, 12, 13, but it's not a root Pythagorean triple. So that's not a root one, but that was. There's a root again. Well, if I go to 6, 1, well, I find it now. 6, 1. So for 6, 1, I've got, multiplying them, 12, 36 take away 1, 35, add 1, 37. Oh, it's still not there. And for this one, I've still got this is a, a root one again. This is this pattern a root, triple, not a root, a root, a multiple, not a root, a root, and so on. Well, it's jumped up to put B up to 2 now, which means A would have to start at 3. If you go through it, that would be 6 doubled is 12. Oh. 9 take away 4, 5. 9 plus 4, 13. There it is. There's my 5, 12, 13 triangle. Everyone's favourite. Do a couple more. I'll do 4, 2 and I'll do 5, 2. And then I'll get fed up. If you do 4, 2, you end up with 16, 12, 20. That's well, multiple again. What about 5, 2? Doubled up. 20. 25 take away 4, 21. Plus the 4, 29. There's another root 1, and so on. Is there a pattern there? That's something you could investigate. So if you wanted to find your own little Pythagorean triple, you just throw some number down. Well, if you pick a couple of prime numbers. 17 and 13. Well, that makes an even one. So will this not be a root 1 when I work it out? So you multiply them together, and you double it, and it comes to 4, 4, 2. You do the 17 squared, take away the 13 squared, and you get 120. You do the 17 squared, add the 13 squared, and you get 4, 5, 8. So that wasn't a root, because they all divide by 2. So I'm not happy with that one. Divided by 2, what have I got? 2, 2, so 1, 60, and 2, 2, 9. Now that must be a root one. What this gives me, though, is a formula. This part here is a formula for a Pythagorean triple in terms of just two variables, A and B. You can use that to generate your own Pythagorean triple, or we can now use it to find which of these are equable, because here's now a formula that I can use for perimeter and area. So, let's extend that to what are the equable Pythagorean triples? Well, here we've got a formula for a Pythagorean triple in terms of any two numbers A and B. A and B, which are positive integers such that A is greater than B, will generate any Pythagorean triple. So, equable means the perimeter is numerically equal to the area. So, what's the perimeter of this? Just add those up. That'll be 2AB plus a squared minus b squared, I'll put that in a wee courtesy bracket just now, plus a squared plus b squared. So if I tidy that up, then I've got altogether 2ab, the b squares will cancel, plus 2a squared. So there's a formula for the perimeter of a Pythagorean triple. Now what about area? That's a half base times height. So it'll be a half of, I'll take that as the base, 2ab times the perpendicular side is a squared minus b squared. So I think on this case I'll multiply that out so that I've got the half obviously cancels out the two. I've got a cubed b minus a b cubed. Now, equable means the area and the perimeter are numerically the same. The area is equal to the perimeter. So what have we got? a cubed b minus a b cubed equals 2ab plus 2a squared. It's full of a's. 
can knock out one of those. So a squared b minus b cubed is the same as 2b plus 2a, dividing by a readily because a is not equal to 0. Now let's rearrange that into a quadratic in a. So you've got b lots of a squared minus 2 lots of a and then minus a b cubed then that will be plus 2b since it'll be minus 2b going over. Let's just put it up here to get some room. There's the information over there. Well, now solve this quadratic for a. So using the quadratic formula, a will be the negative of the coefficient of the linear term. So that will be 2 plus or minus the square root of, again, this one squared, that will be 4, minus 4 times the first one, which is a b, times the last one, which is negative, so that will switch to plus b cubed plus 2b, all over 2 times the coefficient of the first one, all over 2b. So what does this come to? 2 plus or minus all over 2b. Now inside this square root, what have we got? We've got 4b to the power 4 plus 8b squared plus 4. Maybe I should have done this separately side to save having to repeat all of this each time. Now, common factor of 4 can come out, and it can also come out of the square root, so that'll be a 2. And then that'll leave me with a square root. I will put it down here. And what it'll leave me with is b to the 4 plus 2b squared plus 1, which is the same as b squared plus 1 all squared. So, since I've written it, I'll just put it down here, b squared plus 1 all squared. So obviously the square root removes that, which means a equals 2 plus or minus 2 times b squared plus 1, all over 2b. Now, the lowest value of b is 1, so I can't have this subtraction because that would make a negative, which means in this case, I've got this only for a, since a and b are both greater than 0, which means that finally, a is going to equal 2b squared plus 4 all over 2b. So it's not finally. So finally, a is going to be, I should have knocked those 2s out, that was just daft, b squared plus 2 over b. There's the condition for an equable Pythagorean triple. So how many of them are there? Which a's and b actually satisfy this? Can you just knock out that room there? Well, not an awful lot really, because a and b have to be integers, which means that if a is to be an integer, if a is a member of the integers, that means that this must form an integer so that b must divide b squared plus 2. And since b divides b squared, that means that b must divide 2. And there are only two integers that divide 2, so that means there's only the 2, b equals 1, or b equals 2 should be the only solutions to this. Now, you could go all the way back to original quadratic, put b equals 1 into it and solve that quadratic. You'd get two factors, of course. One would be a positive and one would have a negative root. But I don't need to get this result here. If b is 1, that means a is going to be 1 plus 2 over 1, which is 3. And if b is 2, it's going to be 4 plus 2, which is 6 over 2, which also means a equals 3. You can also check that no other values of b greater than 2 will satisfy this. So there should only be two equable Pythagorean triples, and we already worked those two out. But you could just put them back into here and check where they were again. Product 3 doubled is 6. 9 take away 1 is 8. 9 plus 1 is 10, so that means one of them is the 6, 8, 10 triangle, not a root one, so not that nice. What about this one? Is this any better? B is 2, A is 3, product 6 doubled up is 12. 9 take away the 4 is 5, 
9 plus the 4 is 13. Ah, that's a better one. The 5, 12, 13 triangle. That's the best one because that's a root Pythagorean triple, not this multiple. So there, that should be everybody's favourite Pythagorean triple. It's a root one and it's equable. That's about it.